Now, if you're someone that recently had a knee replacement in the last year and you're still struggling on how to use the stairs, then this video is going to be helpful for you. Today, I wanted to discuss why this might be a problem for you still, and most importantly, show you how you can eventually go up and down the stairs without any support. Let's get started. What's going on guys, it's Dr. Mike, and I'm a physical therapist providing tips on how to build strength and longevity with your body. One of the most important tasks that everyone wants to do after a knee replacement is to be able to use the stairs. And I don't mean just use the stairs without any difficulty, but I mean use the stairs without any support. People wanna be very independent and don't wanna have to grab onto any rail or any wall or anything that's around them. They wanna feel the confidence to be able to go up and have that stability on one leg. So today we're gonna to talk about three concepts. Number one is having the proper range of motion. Number two is having the proper strength. And number three, having the proper coordination and balance to be able to go on one leg. So let's first address the range of motion component. Now, what we're truly focused on here is ensuring that in order to use the step efficiently, in order to get your foot up on the step, we have to have adequate knee flexion, your ability to bend your knee, and also adequate ankle dorsiflexion. This is your ability to flex your ankle up, and we need anywhere from 10 to 20 degrees of ankle dorsiflexion, and we need anywhere between 110 to 120 degrees of knee flexion. So if you have that limitation, it's going to be very difficult for you to get your foot up there to transition to being able to perform this task. So number one is ensuring that the proper range of motion is there. Now, if you want some more guidance on how to restore and improve the range of motion in your knee, check out the video I made up here. In the meantime, I'm gonna show you a quick activity that you can use that can help improve the ankle and knee flexion at the same time. So obviously, in order to do some of these activities for today, it is helpful if you have a step at home. <clears throat> now keep in mind the step that I'm using today is about 10 inches high, and it's pretty high for the demonstration that we're going over today, but I didn't have anything shorter. So if you're practicing this at home, if you have access to maybe a four inch or a five inch step, this activity is gonna be a lot easier while you're learning how to do this. Now the first exercise that we're gonna show you on how to really improve this range of motion is just gonna be like a loaded knee flexion exercise. So literally you're gonna bring your surgery knee up onto the step and you're gonna focus on just leaning forward and getting that knee to bend and also getting that ankle to flex into that dorsiflexion. You can even use your hands and you're gonna kind of rock forward, rock back. You're gonna feel some tightness on the back of the calf. You're gonna feel some tightness over the top of the knee, which is perfect because that means we're definitely working through that connective tissue and all the muscles that are limiting your ability to really bend that knee. So you can work on the loaded knee flexion for about one minute at a time where you're just kind of rocking forward and back, which is going to help you restore that ankle and knee range of motion, okay? The second piece in being able to go up and down steps without any assistance of your hands is learning a step down exercise. Now, we are all probably familiar with the step up exercise that you've probably heard of. You're working on really propelling, shifting your body forward on that leg, and then you're kind of hinging at the hips and lowering your down slowly. Now, the key with the step down is instead of us focusing on the step up, we're really focusing on controlling the descent down. So you're gonna kind of shift your weight forward, and when you're first performing this exercise, you can obviously use one hand support or two hand support, but then eventually you're gonna to wanna to take that support away so that you can learn how to build the proper strength, not only in the hip, but in the quadriceps and the hamstrings that are working really hard to control yourself down. One of the main reasons why you can't use the step independently is because the strength is not there in the knee and you're not able to confidently load that leg independently. So we can work on some step downs, controlling the descent on the way down to really focus on getting you comfortable with controlling the up down motion, okay? So you can perform this activity for about three sets and we're still working on each leg. Do not forget about the non-surgery leg. We don't wanna forget 
about strengthening that side as well. So you wanna focus on about three sets on each side and you can focus on basically performing six to eight reps and keep in mind, depending on the step, if it's higher, these are gonna be harder. If it's lower, you might be able to do a couple more sets, but really the focus is on, can you slow your movement down? Can you bring your hips back to slowly lower yourself down? Okay, so this is probably gonna be one of the most important exercises that you can perform to help redevelop strength in the quadricep. Now the third piece in helping you become independent with using the stairs is developing adequate balance on one leg. So most people forget that when they're using a step, essentially you're going from supporting yourself with two legs to now transitioning your body to one leg. So essentially not only are you strengthening the leg, but you also have to have good balance in the leg. One of my favorite ways that you can develop good balance and stability and knee proprioception on that surgery leg is by working on a single leg balance. Best part about this exercise is you can do this safely in your own home. I usually set my patients up in the corner so that they have the corner behind them. If they tend to fall backwards, they can kind of grab onto the, the wall there. They also have the walker in front. And essentially you're going balancing on one leg and now that's really gonna give you the confidence that you need to really load and put all of your body weight on that surgery leg. This can be very fearful for people. So when you're performing this exercise, you might start off with literally two to three seconds balancing on one leg. Just, you know, you trusting that side and trusting that knee that everything's gonna be okay and that you can really start to develop some confidence putting all your weight on that one side. And then as you're getting better with this, you can start to develop and spend more time, maybe 10 seconds or 20 seconds. The goal with this exercise is just like the previous exercise, we wanna perform at least two to three sets of anywhere between 10 to 20 seconds and really being confident with being able to balance with this exercise without any support. So you'll realize as soon as you start being able to balance on one leg without support, as soon as you're able to control yourself down for eight to 10 repetitions with less support. You're gonna realize very quickly how easy the steps will become and eventually not need any support. So give those three exercises a try and leave a comment in the comment section so I can know how these exercises worked out for you. Now, I hope you found these tips helpful and just know that in time and with practice, the stairs no longer have to be a fear or a barrier that you have to face. Now, if you want more information on how to rehab your knee or how to improve your knee range of motion after surgery, check out the videos I made up here. In the meantime, to support this channel, you can give this video a like, comment below on any topics you'd like for me to cover, and I'll see you in the next one.